So anyway, good morning and uh, welcome to EuroCities uh, Cyberspace, can we say that? <laughs> I could hear some uh, birds that, that people have to switch off their mic because in some, in some um, home offices there are very nice birds. <laughs> but anyway, I'm really happy to welcome you uh, to this webinar uh, that we've organized about city-to-city uh, -city cooperation uh, between Europe and China cities during the current crisis, the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, as you know, we're doing this thanks to the EU-funded project um, Trans-Urban EU China. Um, I can hear some music. I think it's uh, Jurga from Vilnius. You're sharing your music, but if you just mute your... It's perfect, great. Right? <laughs> Birds, music. Anyway, now what I wanted to say is that this pandemic has clearly turned uh, our lives upside down. And that's why EuroCities, uh, we're totally mobilized. You've seen that. Your agenda, I guess, has never been full, as full as uh, ever before with our events. But we're totally mobilized to support you uh, to deal with this crisis in the best way we can and in, you know, according to our mission. And uh, so we do it, uh, we've been doing it and we'll continue to do it uh, as much as possible through, you know, policy and visibility activities like, uh, you know, we launched a first statement on COVID uh, as soon as uh, the lockdowns uh, started about solidarities, you know, city leaders called for European solidarity and strong collaboration between all levels of government, you know, from the uh, world, uh, European, national, local and so on to to fight not only the short, short but also the long-term uh, impacts yeah, of, this, uh, of this crisis, but also through networking uh, activities like today. So city-to-city -city exchanges, dialogues, they continue online. They take place online through, uh, you know, what I said, city dialogues, but also forums and working groups. Uh, and, you know, make sure that uh, all the sectors are covered and all the issues are uh, on the agenda but also through you funded projects. And this one is a, a very clear example, the trans in China partners with that, so we try and make the most of that. So as you know, because you're around the table today, we believe in city to city cooperation. It is in our DNA, right? And we think it is even more important than ever now in this period when everything is so new to everyone, individuals, families, governments, local administrations, universities, everyone. Everyone is learning by doing, and actually by also watching what others have done. And also it's, it's really rewarding and in a way hope generating to see so much solidarity happening across you know, the different cities and not only in Europe, but also across uh, you know, the world and in this case in China. So yeah, I think it's gonna be really nice to hear all of you. There are many lined up to, to speak and see how European cities uh, have and are collaborating with Chinese partners in such challenging times for all of us. So yeah, I just wanted to welcome you and, uh, you know, we hope this will be useful and I, I really wish you that uh, you know, the, the, the exchanges will be inspiring and, uh, and fruitful. So thank you very much uh, for being here and uh, yeah, see you soon or speak to you soon, it's probably more relevant. <laughs> thank Brilliant. you, Antoinette. Thank you very much, Annalisa, and I'm sure that uh, wish will indeed be fulfilled. We're going to hear a lot of exciting things today and I think it's a, a moment that definitely tests and, and I'm sure also proves the strength of our projects in international cooperation. Um, I think we're also going to hear a word or two from Anami um, on the project briefly before we fire into cities. Anami, are you there and do you want to communicate with us? Yes and yes. <laughs> uh, so good morning everyone. Uh, it, it's very exciting to uh, be able to have this conversation. Um, as uh, Annelise has already said, so of course there have been a lot of conversations about this topic uh, lately and uh, a lot of experts are engaged both from cities, from companies, from research. And of course we hope to be able to, to compile this into something uh, more solid than so not just having talks but to maybe create guidance documents or something else based on it. And the reason we are so involved in this is that, of course, we have this Trans-Urban EU China uh, project, which is led by Professor Bernard Müller uh, of TU Dresden. Uh, it's fi funded by the European Commission, Horizon 2020. 
And this project deals with the transition towards urban sustainability through socially integrative cities in EU and China. And in this project, so we deal with social integration, with community building, with smart digital responses, land use management, uh, transition pathways and living labs. So topics that are also very relevant for, for during this COVID-19 situation. And in addition, um, we have have done several living labs in China, one of them in Wuhan, in cooperation also with UN Habitat. And of course, when Wuhan was hit first, we started to discuss how we could help our partners in Wuhan to deal with the situation, not the, the contagion itself, because we are not experts in this, but how we could help them rebuild cities, communities after, or maybe even during uh, the pandemic. And then when it spread from Wuhan to global, we started to discuss how our project and our further cooperation could help other cities as well. Uh, so uh, we work now together with UN Habitat and of course Euro cities and many of you who are here today to try to concretely see how we as planners, architects, designers, artists, uh, engineers can help create cities that are more resilient and health promoting environments then that are really helping people to cope in this everyday uh, situation. Um, some of you uh, were also involved in the Urban EU China project, so the, the innovation platform uh, on, on EU China. Um, and I saw on the agenda that Enrich China is also going to present afterwards. That was the sister project of Urban New China. So basically, there is already, there's a lot of, of let's say, social capital, project capital of long-standing cooperation of very concrete ideas of what we can do. And we hope that these kinds of talks can also help us onwards. Very concretely, there's going to be most likely a summer school and a series of expert workshops um, related to this topic around August. And we hope then to be able to involve all of you um, specifically in this. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Anami. And, and yes, to underscore what Anami just said there, I mean, this uh, Transurban EU China work is, is open to all. So if you're here right now representing a city and you haven't already gotten involved, uh, I can't think of a more appropriate time to uh, jump on the ship. Um, so without further ado, let me hand over to Katerina Kulik, who's going to present us some of the really exciting things that have been happening uh, with Belgrade in terms of China relations. Ka Katerina, are you there and can you hear us? Oh, hello, Anthony. Fantastic. Oh, and maybe before you go ahead, Katrina, I'll just remind everyone to please make sure that their microphones remain on mute unless uh, they are Katrina at the moment. <laughs> Thank you, Katrina. Thank you. Dear colleagues, it is my great pleasure to be part of this webinar and to share our experience. I wish to thank the organizers from your cities for getting us together. I believe we will have a fruitful discussion and I invite all interested parties to ask questions after my statement. First of all, I would like to state some facts regarding Belgrade and Serbia. The pandemic started in March 11th, and the first cases were reported in Serbia on 6th of March. State of emergency was declared in Serbia March 15th. But before even that, we had consultations in regards to COVID-19 with the public of China. The decision to declare state of emergency was made in order to successfully fight the outbreak of coronavirus in Serbia. It encompassed many measures aimed at protecting people's health and ultimately their lives. The most important thing I would like to emphasize regarding the tremendous help our country received from People's Republic of China was the swiftness of the response of our friends and partners for many years now. Only six days, not even a full week after the declaration of the state of emergency on March 21st, the first plane of medical aid arrived in Serbia from China. This was the proof of the steel friendships our countries have and excellent re relationships between Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic and the President of the People's Republic of China, Xi Jinping. The delivery of medical aid contained face mask and other protective gear that was crucial in preventing the sudden spread of disease as we face shortages of this medical that time. The second airplane with medical supply arrived shortly after, 
of March 24th, and it contained shipments specifically for the city of Belgrade, 120,000 masks, 1,800 protective suits and disinfectants. With that first aid, we were able to buy time to prepare all other activities that helped us to prevent the spread of epidemic. Along with the much needed equipment, People's Republic of China sent to Serbia experienced team of medical experts who, who already fought and conquered coronavirus in China. With their knowledge and expertise, we were able to adjust our health system. From that point on, specific activities regarding COVID-19 were performed, such as establishing COVID-19 centers, emergency hospitals in Belgrade Fair with 3,000 beds for patients with coronavirus, disinfections of all public spaces, and one of the most important advice we received was isolation of confirmed cases and increased number of tested cases. The advice that we received from Chinese experts regarding social distancing, COVID-19 hospital disinfection and treatment of patients proved to be crucial. Another plane with the help for Belgrade that arrived on 20, March 26 contained 48,000 masks, 5,000 protective suits and disinfectants, and it was a donation from China and Chinese company HBIS, the owner of steel factory in Smederevo, but also IBS and Elephant Alliance. One more important donation was aimed at kindergartens. We received funds for buying of barriers for disinfection, which was essential in gradually opening the kindergartens from April 11th. Today, all kindergartens will be open for children in Belgrade. Finally, on the April 20, Serbia received two big donations from People's Republic of China. The laboratories for mass testing on coronavirus named FireEye. One laboratory is located in clinical center of Serbia in Belgrade and other in the city of Niš. Thanks to the capacities of the FireEye, which is 2,000 samples per day, we were able to increase number of tested patients. That meant that we were able to decide to end the state of emergency as number of confirmed patients with coronavirus dropped below 5% of the number of tested. And I would like to finish with a quote by the ambassador of People's Republic of China in Serbia, Her Excellency Chen Bo, who said that solidarity is the most important thing in the fight against the virus. Thank you for your attention and I will answer your questions now. Fantastic, really interesting. Thank you so much, Katerina. So uh, indeed, as Katerina says, there's a, a few minutes to answer some questions. And then at the end of all the presentations, we'll also have another moment to answer questions. So if you have something to ask, please feel free to unmute and ask, or you can put it in the chat and I'll be happy to ask on your behalf. Uh, while people get their brains working and their fingers working on the keyboard, maybe I'll just start off, uh, Katerina. So the, the, the I mean, the level of engagement with China seems to have been absolutely enormous from what I hear from you. Um, can you just tell me briefly, is this something that, that had been common before? I mean, was there, was there a lot of engagement um, with the People's Republic of China before this point? Or did this really represent a new high point in relations? Uh, and, and if so, does it indicate much for, for how you'll go forward in the future? Well, uh, China, uh, Republic of China is uh, our great friend and we, we are having a long diplomatic relation with the uh, People's Republic of China. Somehow, you know, because we are a great partner in also in other sectors, but uh, the most important thing here is the swiftness of their response. In uh, six days after the receiving uh, state of emergency, we received a large uh, medical equipment, and that was the crucial part. Also, we are having uh, great relations with the European Union and other uh, countries, but this was like a, a past, past, uh, past help, which was essential. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. And, and then I'm... Not hearing any questions from anyone else, but I'll just, let me just um, emphasize part of that question again before we move on. So, uh, I mean, the swiftness is something that's very exciting and important. I mean, exceedingly important in a moment like this. Uh, when you look to the future of your relations with China, d do you see uh, this event having an impact there? Even if you think about the near term, um, coming out of confinement and starting up normal life again? 
uh, well, uh, this, uh, this uh, situation uh, strengthened our relationship even more. So I'm very positive about our future cooperation with the uh, People's Republic of China and Chinese cities as well. Okay. Super. Thank you, Katrina. Glad to hear that. And, and do please stay on the line because I'm sure we'll have um, more questions coming in later on. But that was great to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so uh, we'll now hear from Bremen. I think Matthias Hempen, I can see him there. So uh, you're on mute, but uh, please do uh, come in and enter the arena. We'd love to hear what, what uh, your city has been up to with China. So I'm not so familiar with that uh, system. Can you hear me now? Yes, okay. Um, first of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to give a, a statement regarding uh, Corona uh, help from China in Bremen. Um, uh, we have very, very many initiatives between China and Bremen regarding the Corona help. And uh, I was involved in uh, some minor project, uh, but I think uh, it has some uh, unique uh, uh, facilities behind it, so maybe it's also good uh, uh, to talk about that. Actually, uh, I'm from Bremen. I work for the uh, economic development company uh, of the city of Bremen, and uh, Bremen has a, a lot of uh, connections with China. Uh, of course, Bremen is a part of, of Germany. We are one of the major ports, and we have relationships uh, with uh, business in China for the last 250 years. We find uh, more than 500 companies in Bremen which make uh, frequently business with China. We have about 200 of them which have a permanent presence or investment in China. And from China, we have about 160 companies here in Bremen, uh, not included the restaurants. So, um, and uh, what happened uh, when uh, Corona hit us, uh, this was in the beginning, middle of, of March. We found among the business people in uh, Bremen, the Chinese business people who live here, uh, a tremendous amount of solidarity. And what happened is they start calling us. So we have on stock uh, some uh, uh, protective clothing, protective equipment, face masks, in, in minor or in larger scales. But, you know, you, you, I, I got a 10, uh, 12, 15 phone calls every, every day. And what also happened is a lot of Chinese in China who have a connection with Bremen, either they have studied here or they work for a company in Bremen or they have worked in Bremen and moved back to China. You know, all these people came and wanted to help. <clears throat> And uh, our company, we have an office in Shanghai, and our Chinese colleague over there was also being asked for this uh, kind of facilities and, and, uh, uh, re <clears throat> and uh, recommendations for help. So what we did is, you know, we, we had people who wanted uh, to, to, uh, to spend something in kind, or some people also wanted to give money. So uh, on the WeChat platform, we have established a group and uh, uh, also uh, my Chinese colleague, you know, there was so much of communication all in Chinese and my command the Chinese language was not too much. So I could not really follow up everything in detail, but it was so much of communication. And within these three days, we have got a, um, a, um, a substantial amount of money in donations from Chinese people who spent the money or, or would give the money on, on WeChat Pay which was actually collected by my Chinese colleague. And among these people, we had lots of uh, experts who were able to even to, um, to procure uh, certified uh, masks and certified equipment for medical use and cl cl clinical use. You know, this is, was also um, uh, quite difficult to find because everybody wanted to have these goods, but there was obviously a shortage. And what we have also seen, we got a lot of um, uh, offers from racketeers and dealer wheelers who, who wanted to make quick money uh, and uh, wanted to sell uh, equipments completely overpriced or sometimes with, uh, uh, with forged certificates. And this was very difficult to, to handle because uh, you must, if, you, if this uh, goods go into the um, medical sector or a safety sector, you must be sure that the quality of the products meets the standards they require. Otherwise, it's very dangerous. And then we found 
good suppliers. We found also some people in China who helped us in the logistics because even the air freight uh, transportation broke together. You know, airlines were not uh, flying, so cargo planes were uh, sometimes full or not available. So even uh, if you're under time pressure to supply the goods in, in, on a short time, it was very helpful to have this existing community, which gave us so much solidarity and so much help uh, and expertise that we could manage within the three, four days uh, to, uh, a good amount of, of safety equipment uh, to be transported from China into Bremen. So uh, the message is we have formal relationships with China. Bremen also has a city partnership with the uh, city of Dalian in, 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 uh, in China, which has also sent us a, a, a good package of, of help. But the, uh, the mood and the, the solidarity of those people Actually, this was a privately organized um, uh, thing, which uh, uh, where we had a kind of a coordinating um, uh, 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 function. But I found it so that, you know, we did a lot of development in our relationships with China, and this has really paid back because we felt that the people who live here and the people who are have a connection to our place showed up, and in uh, and that moment when we needed the help, as you know. Friends in need are friends indeed. And this is what we have seen in this situation with China. And I wanted to thank all of uh, them who have contributed to this uh, in kind of, of uh, spending some goods or spending some, uh, or giving some, some uh, uh, small amount of money or a larger amount uh, to help us in that moment when we require this uh, kind of uh, help. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Matthias. And indeed, I think that friends in need, friends indeed definitely rings true. And, and everyone, uh, all the cities present have experienced um, some insights based on, on, the, on that phrase uh, in the last few weeks. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to ask, um, so again, it's open for questions. Anyone who'd like to pose a question to Matthias now, uh, and you can also do so later, please go ahead and put it in the chat box or you can uh, unmute and, and ask yourself, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, uh, Matthias, I'd just like to ask you, I mean, I think this element of uh, people who had been living in Bremen, part of businesses and things, had, had, had felt that attachment to them, because I myself, have, I'm sure you have lived in several cities and it wouldn't be the first thing to occur to me to, oh no, you know, this city that I lived in before needs help. So I'd really love some insight into um, how you've gone about kindling that relationship um, with, with Chinese business people or, or other members of the Chinese community living in the, in the city to, to the level that they felt that attachment kick in at the, at the right moment? Yeah, actually, uh, of course, we are promoting our place to foreign investors and also to our businesses to come. But um, uh, what you must also see is uh, uh, business works only if the people like the place. You know, you have, uh, we call it in, in our business, you have location factors, hard location factors, soft location factors. This is indeed a soft location factor. You know, uh, what we have seen is uh, uh, promoting our place in foreign countries is quite difficult because we are not one of the biggest cities in, in Germany. Uh, we are a good place, but you can only experience it uh, once you have lived here. And what we have seen is that most of the people who come to us, they like the place. So then they make friends and uh, as from our organization, we give also a lot of help uh, to integrate uh, people, not only business-wise, but also if the families are coming in. And, uh, and uh, so um, I think uh, this pays a bit, a bit back. If, if you have uh, people here who, who like the place, who have friends here, um, they have maybe some, also some emotional feeling with it. And uh, this, of course, then pays back. This is a great point, yes, and I think it's something that people are, are starting to, to think about more, that uh, attracting business also means attracting the people who work for the businesses. So that's a great uh, insight, thank you. Um, uh, people are welcome to, ah, I see one question coming in from uh, Diane uh, Smolders. Did, did, um, did Bremen organize help for Dalian at the time of the outbreak there in January? So was there any, was there any, um, contact the, in the other direction earlier on before the, before the crisis hit Europe? 
Yes, uh, we help uh, uh, in, in such case. We we took care in, in, in certain ways. You know, I'm um, uh, frequently in touch with the city government of, of Dalian, and uh, even last year we were invited with a group uh, to join uh, the World Economic Forum in Dalian, and uh, there is a frequent exchange. And what we have seen is that thanks God, uh, uh, Dalian was not so much hit by the corona like other places, for example, Wuhan and uh, uh, some other cities, you know. Um, they, whenever we offered help, it was appreciated that we asked, but um, uh, we had the feeling that they said, okay, no, well, we, in our situation, it's not so, uh, uh, so difficult like in other places maybe. Um, on the other hand, uh, Dalian, when, when uh, Corona hit uh, uh, Germany, Dalian was immediately there. They offered help, they started communication. Um, I was involved in also some of the, uh, some parts of the government. And uh, we must say this is a really also good working uh, city partnership relation. Great, thank you very much. Um, and I'm going to hand over, there's a question for Belgrade as well, although maybe I should, it be, might, maybe interesting to point out, uh, indeed, of course, the level of response will, will always depend on the level of need in, in the sister city. And um, mm -hmm. it might be interesting to mention uh, for you, um, Diane, that um, because Belfast was supposed to speak today and unfortunately they won't be able to join us, but um, they are one of the cities that in January, their sister city, Shenyang, um, was hit by coronavirus and Belfast actually reached out and sent uh, personal protective um, equipment early on, which was, uh, which was very much appreciated and, uh, and met in kind on the way back. So I think that the level of, of engagement at that stage is definitely depending on the level of need in the, in the cities that we're, that we're engaged with. Um, uh, just a quick question back, um, Katrina, I think you're still there. Good, fantastic. So there was a question from Prague when you mentioned donations of personal protective equipment. Um, the question from Prague is, did you pay for the medical supplies or, or, or were there other ways that that exchange took place? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, the donations that I was mentioning was purely donations, but also we were uh, buying some medical stuff and uh, medical equipment, sorry. And uh, that was also uh, crucial at the, that time because uh, when everybody was searching for uh, respirators, uh, face masks and other protective gear, uh, we were able to buy that. So uh, in this situation, money was not a problem. Uh, but it was uh, very important to have the equipment to buy and where to buy. So that was very, very uh, great that we had great relations with China. So we were able to uh, get to their market and buy medical equipment. But uh, when I was speaking about the, the donations, that was free, of course. Okay, brilliant. So a mix, a mix of approaches and making sure that uh, any deficit in, in purchase can be made up with donation or, or vice versa. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, so let's speed on to um, uh, Bristol, where we're going to hear from Shelley Nanya. Sh Shelley, are you there and can you hear me? Shelley, is there? No. Okay, I don't see Shelley. So perhaps she'll speak to us later. Um, Hi, sorry. Ah, brilliant. I hear you, Shelley. Excellent. <laughs> Um, good morning, everybody. So a um, couple of points I wanted to make um, about our relationship with our sister city of Guangzhou. Um, so um, Guangzhou in Guangdong province, um, in terms of uh, immediate response on coronavirus, um, they have been very good in offering us a donation of masks and reaching out to us. We've got a very strong relationship with Guangzhou um, in terms of the city council, the universities um, and our twinning association as well. So they offered us a donation of masks, which we're still jumping over various different hurdles to get them here. Um, but also they offered a handbook as well on the China response to COVID, which they sent out to a number of different cities because um, also their co-chair on United Cities for Local Government. Um, so obviously that's not all relevant to what's happening here in the EU for the, in, in terms of the way the response is managed, but was very helpful. Um, so that's in terms of the immediate response, um, but longer term recovery, um, we've already started to think about, and this was actually before COVID ha happened, about 
um, cities um, and their um, how they frame their growth around the sustainable development goals. And now this becomes even more important with COVID-19 framework. So um, we'd already sent our handbook on how we use SDGs as a framework for growth. And now that will be focused more around the recovery of SDGs. So we look forward to working with Guangzhou on that. Um, and also before COVID-19 hit, we were trying to um, develop our business links around the tech sector, um, which we've been trying to do for a number of years, but the kind of mapping and, and was, we were making quite a lot of progress. So we're still trying to aim for a trip out as soon as possible to Guangzhou um, to develop our links on, on, on the tech sector. So that will still continue. We're still continuing with the mapping there. So yeah, a little bit on kind of immediate response and then recovery. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. And it's interesting indeed to see that um, it, uh, element of the of moving forward uh, and helping each other think about how that can be possible as well. So that's very interesting for me. Um, before I ask, is there anyone else, if anyone else wants to ask a question now or indeed later, uh, remember you can indeed uh, just stick it in the chat box there or unmute and ask. Um, in the meantime, I'd like to ask you about, um, I mean, you mentioned with this handbook that, of course, some of the experience is relevant, not, not all of it, and certainly, you know, perhaps not all the policy advice would be relevant either. Um, can you tell me if there's, if there are some particular points that were inspirational for you in terms of the approach that China has taken or suggested when it comes to uh, moving forward out of this scenario um, or or if there are sort of future plans to to work on that um, in concert yeah I think the ham the handbook so the, ha the the Guangzhou handbook was much more focused on kind of dealing with stopping the spread of the disease and um and so there were elements of that which we kind of reviewed with our kind of working group here um rather than the kind of moving forward right but we hope to be able to work with them so um actually in a couple of weeks time we were supposed to be having a sustainable development goals meeting with a group of cities from um not just within europe but china or us and others so that's now being postponed for another year and um, so we will be talking to Guangzhou and other cities about how we think about the sort of framework for recovery, but that hasn't really started yet. Mm -hmm. But good to have this relationship so that when other sort of um, schedules or opportunities are, are cut out, out or, or delayed, that you have still this direct line that you can, um, that you can um, take advantage of. Yeah. Um, I don't see questions coming in yet. If someone does put one in, we'll definitely return to you. So please uh, stay on the line and we'll have an open discussion later as well. So thank you very much for those insights, uh, Shelley. And, and definitely interesting to hear about the, the exchange of um, advice and, and methodology rather than just equipment. So, so thank you. Um, next, we're going to hear from Daniel uh, Verheiden from the Brussels capital region. Daniel, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Fantastic. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Thank you. Okay. And maybe I'll just remind people, if they're not Daniel, to please make sure that their microphone is off so we don't have any uh, clattering of plates or anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I'm, I'm one of the new guests here in, in this uh, um, group. Um, normally, it's another colleague of mine who's uh, following up with uh, EuroCities, but I'm in charge of uh, relations with uh, China, among other countries, in our international department, so for Brussels capital region. And in uh, China, we do have three main partners, uh, which are the Beijing city, the capital, of course, and then Xi'an, the uh, ancient uh, capital, and uh, Sichuan province. And actually, in uh, in this COVID uh, nineteen uh, era, we we have contact with the three regions, of course. Uh, but as far as um, help, uh, sending help uh, out uh, is concerned, it's uh, mainly from Sichuan province and Xi'an that uh, we get some direct support. Uh, for Beijing, we do have some some uh, relations, of course. Um, 
but uh, Sichuan and uh, Xi'an offered us to send uh, masks and actually they're still on their way. I'll, I will explain why. Uh, it has been uh, quite late. But um, actually what happened is that normally this year in April we would have a, a mission uh, with our, uh, our minister in charge of uh, foreign relations to go to the three cities in uh, half of April, so just after Easter. And of course, because of the COVID-19 uh, situation, this uh, mission was canceled. And uh, as a counterpart, actually, um, our partners in Sichuan and uh, Xi'an said, okay, uh, you cannot come, but we will help you. Because at that time, um, uh, Belgium was hard, hardly hard hit in, in, uh, in April one of, of the countries that had the very high mortality rate. And so we're very happy to have this help. Not to say that it's, it will save the whole situation, but because they're talking about in total 50,000 masks, so you, we need much more, but it's more like a symbolic help. And it's also uh, for them to reiterate their, their commitment to, uh, to Brussels, of course. Um, so this was, uh, the offer was already in uh, half April, even beginning of April. But uh, I must say that we had a lot of difficulties getting these masks here, not because of the Chinese, but because of uh, regulations here in Belgium. Because as you might have heard also, there were a lot of uh, uh, difficult situations with masks that were not qualified, that got here and that had to be either destroyed or, or adapted. And so um, the Belgian government is very strict on uh, regulations and they ask specific uh, um, certificates with uh, EU codes and, and Chinese codes. And actually, this made the whole process very difficult because the Chinese uh, counterpart apparently did not have the possibility to, to produce the right certificates, although the, the masks are uh, are very good so according to me um, and in the end uh, we we got the offer from our uh, foreign relations department from from Belgian state to have it all sent by a diplomatic pouch actually so that's what's happening now so it was really our last uh, resort and um, we uh, we were able to do that so they're they're on the way now um, we hope that the um, testing afterwards in Belgium will, will be positive. But anyway, the mask will be there because it was really important for us also, um, as I say in China, not to lose face and not to have to say to the Chinese people, okay, uh, we're very happy with your mask, but we cannot uh, accept them. So now we took the responsibility on our side. So we organized um, the sending of it. Um, and that's, that's a bit uh, like the story. For Beijing, uh, they did not really offer um, help in material uh, way, um, but they had uh, like some, like one week ago, they had a very big sem seminar, like the one we're having today, with all their uh, partner cities around the world. And they, they all discussed about uh, what happened in these countries. And so it was quite remarkable because they had, um, uh, people from around the world, from, from Rio de Janeiro to, to Seoul. And uh, we could see really the solidarity between all those, all those uh, people and cities, which was uh, very nice. But for the rest, uh, I got a list of questions from, from uh, the lady from Ghent also. For instance, um, uh, did, did we pay something for, for this uh, mask? Of course not. Uh, and even the, the diplomatic pouch is, is offered now by, by our Belgian government. So um, we, we get it totally for free. And uh, of course, for the, uh, on the other side, in the beginning of in March and so on, we asked our partners, of course, if we could help them. But um, at that time, there was a shortage of this kind of material in, in Europe and in, in Belgium, so we could not send them any um, masks or other material. Um, but we, we simply sent them some letters of support uh, from our minister, and that was highly appreciated also. Because for China, 
it's also now this period is, is used actually as a as a diplomacy time of course and you all know the the mass diplomacy uh, uh, movement and so it's very important for the Chinese now to to show that they are um, uh, they show solidarity with the world but they also expect uh, other um, countries to to uh, appreciate what they are doing and that's kind of a give give and take of course um, so we're always happy to, to work with uh, with Chinese uh, governments and uh, but this is like not unlike like in in Bremen it's not uh, based on uh, on uh, private companies or people to people relations but it's really uh, on uh, relations with the local governments but on on the regional level so that's that's a difference okay brilliant thank you and that's uh a really interesting story and a great solution of the diplomatic but i mean hardly ideal but very innovative solution of the uh, diplomatic bag as well sort of diplomacy within diplomacy so that's great um and just uh quickly yeah and indeed the idea of um keeping even if there's nothing physically to offer just to to give that support and to make um your chinese counterparts aware uh, uh, that you're that you're there and 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 willing to do what whatever one can even when little would be done i think is, is is extremely important um everyone is free to enter questions so if someone has one they can please ask it um otherwise i'll just ask so so Having seen this response and then having this sort of issues with with hold up, was there and, and then the further sort of diplomatic trying to figure it out, the regulations with the with the national government, um, is that something that you can see informing future relations? Do you do you see the possibility now to have so maybe a more open discussion between the national level and the local level on how you're cooperating with China or on or on the sort of regulations you'll have um, and indeed your cooperation with other Belgian cities if that was something that was useful in this context of trying to speak to the national government well not directly I think but um, as you may know Belgium is a quite complicated country with different regions and communities and this whole situation now has led to uh, a new discussion about how to organize the health services in Belgium uh, because uh, now they are more and more uh, on the region, uh, regional level, but this amounts to the, the problem that at the moment we have in these discussions about what to do with, uh, to, to cope with the, with the crisis. Uh, we, we see that we have nine ministers uh, of health in the different uh, regions that have to, to try to cooperate. And now they, they are discussing about uh, maybe re-federalizing um, this health uh, organization and yeah some some people are uh, in favor of that solution others are not uh, so it's more a discussion on the internal side uh, with china i don't think so um, we just continue our our, our region's uh, involvement with uh, chinese regions and uh, i must say also that um, these contacts are also and, and very um, positively influenced by personal connections with the people with which I work there. So the, my counterpart in the different regions, they are really almost like friends. And that's uh, what's uh, um, facilitating the official contacts also. Okay, brilliant. Yes, yeah, indeed. And I think uh, that's the experience of, of many cities, the need for this personal relation um okay thank you very very much uh for that insight daniel and okay. we'll be i think back to you when we have a, a, a more open discussion um i just note for everyone who's listening if you're not paying attention to the chat box uh, it's interesting to see that uh, shelly has just put in there a link um to information about collaboration on the sdgs with uh Gangzhou. so i recommend you take a peek with that if you're interested in in that subject um, which doubtless many of you are. Um, so next we're going to be hearing from Frankfurt, from Edward Heckler. Are, are you there, Edward, and can you hear me? So we don't hear immediate anything from Edward. So 
So let's move on swiftly to Ghent, and maybe we'll get to hear from Frankfurt uh, in a bit. Uh, Tineke, are you there, Tineke? Hello, yes, you are. Uh, fantastic. Oh, right, who's that? We, 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 is that? We found the button. That's Frankfurt. Okay, Par yeah. <laughs> pardon me, Tineke. Um, that's, that's great. So please go, um, yeah. go ahead. Um, yes, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, yeah, Frankfurt is twinned with Guangzhou. Uh, as well as Bristol, so we share uh, the friends uh, in China and we have this relation since uh, 30 years, we just uh, celebrated last year 30 years uh, anniversary of the partnership and uh, we're going to meet our friends from uh, the friends from Bristol uh, from time to time in Guangzhou as well, so hello to Bristol. <laughs> and uh, we also have uh, in Frankfurt a strong uh, Chinese community, a large community, we have roughly uh, 400 can you hear me, everybody? You ask? Yes, okay. We have uh, roughly uh, 400 uh, Chinese companies here in, uh, in the Frankfurt metropolitan area. We have these uh, large uh, Chinese banks and uh, also the, uh, uh, because of the airport and the, the air companies, uh, uh, many traffic between China. 70 flights a week, not at the moment, all shut down, but usually it's 70 non-stop flights, flights from Frankfurt to China. And um, what happened in, um, when, uh, when, when China was hit first, there was the, the same situation that uh, we uh, were asked for assistance, we tried, uh, but we had the same, like we heard from Brussels, the problem was that the world market was empty, the masks were not available in larger quantities over here because we learned that they were mostly produced in China, but China was... Uh, the, the delivery chain was was uh, interrupted, so it was a little bit of a challenge to help. But uh, what we uh, did, our mayor uh, expressed solidarity to Guangzhou and offered assistance if uh, further needed. Uh, so financial need was not uh, demanded from from Guangzhou. So um, that was the point. And then when uh, Germany was uh, uh, hit as well. Um, uh, it was very, very quick, the reaction from, from China, as we heard from the colleagues from other cities. Uh, first of all, it was the, uh, uh, the, the Chinese government is represented here uh, by a large uh, Chinese uh, general consulate. And uh, there was uh, the offer from the Chinese general consulate to provide uh, the, the masks and also the protective su uh, suits, uh, which was uh, gladly accepted by the city government of Frankfurt and our firefighters who are on the, uh, on the, uh, in charge of purchasing all this uh, stuff. They, uh, also, some of them maybe were not certified, uh, but uh, I think nowadays we see that we need the mask, every, the everyday masks. We go out for the shopping or in public transport. So even if at the beginning maybe if there were some uh, uh, demands that the, it must be totally uh, perfectly certified. I think there is use of all the masks we have got because you can even need a scarf uh, nowadays uh, to go out and protect your mouth and nose. So I think all this material is of very good uh, use and very precious. And, uh, and the very special thing was that we have, uh, we have three school partner uh, couples exchanging between the students exchange between Gordon, John, and Franklin, and this is going on since 20 years already. We are very happy about that, and it happened that uh, one of the partner schools in Guangzhou uh, immediately offered to the partner school in Frankfurt to send uh, masks and protecting uh, material, uh, which was very personally and very touching because it was sent from the teacher themselves, all in small packets. Uh, and it was also a custom uh, problem at the beginning, the challenge, but as it was sent not in one big quantity, it could go through the custom and the headmaster and the teacher in charge could go to the customs office in Frankfurt and collect those materials. And now it's of very good use as from today on the, the classes, uh, the, the, the most part of the students, they come back to school uh, once a week or twice a week and the rest is school from home still. But I think they are very, very happy about it and can use it as well. And besides, there were also private initiatives. We, we got also from the daily news that there were uh, Chinese uh, citizens uh, locally here who were helping also the towns around Frankfurt. I, I read some news like about Homburg, 
there was an initiative from, from Chinese citizens helping the city government. But there was a pride, a broad reaction of help and assistance from Chinese, which was very, very well accepted. Thank you. Brilliant, very interesting. Thank you very much. Um, and I love this solution of the sending individually. I think that's very um, somehow indeed both 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 practical and and also heart heartwarming or sweet in some way. Um, and so uh, again, I welcome anyone to enter questions in the chat box. Meanwhile, I just ask you about. Um, so you you said that the cooperation has always been quite close between um, and, and and expansive between Frankfurt and China. It, 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 do you see that? Um, changing to become strong, stronger, either in a sort of um, spiritual or material sense in the near future, given uh, this engagement? I think uh, what our colleague from Bremen said, friends indeed are friends indeed. It's a very good uh, saying. And I think you, we can also uh, project this to our relation with China. I have to admit that it's, uh, as we heard from Brussels, it's also it's friends, you know. We have these long-standing relations with China. I'm doing it for a very, very long time, and uh, I was very uh, receiving a lot of delegations and friends from Guangzhou here, and we had uh, assisted for for also our missions going to China. And this is a long, a long, deep friendship, I can say, also a personal on a personal base, which now proved. And uh, I'm very convinced that this will. Uh, become even deeper in in the future then. okay brilliant thank you very much for that uh, and what really interesting um and i'll just uh give a brief intervention because we hear um from Tallinn speaking in the in the chat box that they have received ten thousand masks they're saying um but that these masks all remain in customs uh, at the moment and they're having difficulty extracting them. So I think that's felt. And yeah. I don't know if I have mentioned that, maybe I forgot to mention, but the Guangzhou was sending masks as well. I just mentioned the Chinese government, but then Guangzhou was sending a big quantity. It was 100,000 then actually. Oh, wow. Okay. So I forget to mention, yeah, it's very important to say. <laughs> Sorry. You know, certainly. So both yeah. levels Thank simultaneously, you. which is good. Thank you. Um, so, so for Tallinn, yes, I think we'll, we'll um, definitely hear from more cities experiencing similar things and maybe some other interesting workarounds as well. Okay, um, thank you very much, Edward. And we're going to Tinika now. We know that you're there and ready, I think. So Tinika, Hello. can you hear me? Brilliant. Please go ahead. Uh, let's hear what's happening in your city. Okay, hi. Um, I'm an international policy officer in Ghent. And um, Ghent has approximately 260,000 inhabitants, and we're only 50 kilometers northwest of Daniel, of Brussels. Um, Ghent is um, also a member of the executive committee of Eurocities. Um, but first, to set the scene about our China policy, um, we're not a very active uh, with our partnerships. We do have two partner cities. Um, but I think it's good to mention in, in Ghent, we have a China network, a local China network, where we have regularly meetings with our university or port or um, China Chamber of Commerce um, and our provincial government, where we share our updates of our activities and also we sometimes organize events. So, for example, when the Chinese ambassador for Belgium started newly in his job, we sent him a, a, a joint invitation and he met our mayor with the um, governor together with the national director of the university so it's a, a bit our way of saying hey um you're very welcome but we also talk among each other so um and also we have good contact with our foreign affairs department in uh, in belgium so when we were offered in mid-march um, this donation of protective materials we also uh, contacted our foreign affairs department and as Daniel also mentioned, our uh, 20,000 mouth masks and 500 protective overalls are now uh, sent through the uh, Belgian embassy in Beijing to, um, to, to Brussels and then for checkup to Ghent. But we're very curious also about the required quality standards. Um, and um, because we, we have heard from uh, testers in, uh, in the, from the government that some masks really, well, the way she put it, said she, I wouldn't even make a, use it 
uh, for a coffee as a coffee filter. So um, it's also a bit of, so we're very scared actually about <laughs> how, if it's not worth uh, the quality, how would you react or communicate to your Chinese partner without them losing face or so let's hope for the best. Um, so I share with my previous colleagues that also the, the gratitude towards Chinese partners for help. But I would also like to inject a more critical voice in this webinar, maybe for the uh, Q&A later on. So my worries are about also this donation diplomacy, um, because I also realized when being offered medical equipment from China, I saw a big enthusiasm in our city um, and being critical as a, as, as a staff member about these donations was put aside because we were in urgent need of this equipment. So. Um, so my, my idea was maybe I can launch two questions for the Q&A later. Uh, like what responsibility do we have as a city in accepting these kind of donations? Maybe not only on a local level, but also on a geopolitical level and uh, being part of the, of the EU. Um, or, or maybe concre more concrete, is there a downside in accepting these donations? Should we feel more pressured or, or anything? And the second would be like, how do you communicate to your citizens about these donations or this cooperation with China? Because we see there's a very critical mind uh, in our, in our um, society about um, Chinese involvement. Um, that's quite recent, only last two years, I think in Belgium, you can really talk about um, this debate going on. Um, so this, this communication uh, strategy, <laughs> I would uh, like to hear more uh, from the other cities, how, how they're dealing with it. So I don't know if you have any questions uh, for Ghent, feel free. That's great, uh, Tineke, and really, I, I'm very definitely interesting to hear the other side of it. I mean, the worries that come with international cooperation and, and also uh, maybe this uh, gray zone of re reciprocity and, and what's expected uh, if anything, when it comes to um, accepting these these uh, donations, um, I, if anyone has a question for Tinika, they're welcome to share it in the chat box. Um, maybe Tinika, what I'll do is just take your questions on to the following speakers. In the meantime, uh, I think those are both very interesting ones, and, and I'll say as well the. I'm, I'm aware anyway with um, Belfast, who unfortunately won't be joining us today, that they had a, a very tough time communicating with with them um, and with anti-Chinese sentiment, basically, in Belfast. And the mayor uh, ended up making sort of a Twitter video where he publicly thanked China to try and change the impression uh, of the of the locals about this. Um, but the, both, both two good questions. Um, and let's see what uh, people have to say about them. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so we hear next from Anna Tilling in Hamburg. Uh, Anna, can you hear me? Are you there? I'm here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me too? Perfectly, thank you. Brilliant. Um, yeah, thanks very much for having me um, and inviting me to be part of this webinar. I am currently filling in for my colleague, actually, who is usually in charge of relations with Asia, but is now on sabbatical. And um, as she left for her sabbatical at the beginning of the year, she sort of predicted me a very calm few months because we had local elections coming up in Hamburg in February. And usually sort of the time of coalition building tends to be fairly calm in terms of international engagement, apparently. This does not apply in times of a global pandemic, as I was soon to learn. Um, Hamburg has really close ties with Shanghai. Um, the two cities have been sister cities since 1986. And I'm going to focus on one specific aspect of this cooperation, which is really broad and, as I said, quite close. Um, um, this one aspect is sort of yeah, generally important, but was also especially important during the pandemic so far. Um, which is that the city of Hamburg has a permanent representation in Shanghai, the Hamburg Liaison Office. Um, it was founded in 1986 also under the name of Hansa Office Shanghai and it is financed by partner institutions from Hamburg. So there's the Senate Chancellery, Chancellery so us from the city of Hamburg, there's, uh, for example, Port of Hamburg Marketing and the Hamburg Tourism Board and the Hamburg Chamber of Commerce and a few others. 
And the activities of this office typically normally include city promotion for Hamburg, government relations, um, representation of the partner institutions, and also press work and event management. Now, during the pandemic, um, it turned out really important to us that we had sort of not only this very long-term cooperation and very close cooperation, but also the on-site presence in China for a number of reasons. First of all, it meant that we had very early and very detailed and unbureaucratic and unfiltered information on the situation on the ground, both in Shanghai and in China more broadly speaking. And our colleagues in, in Shanghai also sort of really kept us um, up to date in terms of the um, countermeasures that were being taken um, long before the pandemic reached Germany. So we sort of had a really differentiated picture of what could be in store for Hamburg. Then once the pandemic reached Germany, um, we also had uh, a donation from the Foreign Affairs Office in, in Shanghai of masks. But um, our office there also helps sort of in coordinating private donations or donations from businesses. Um, quite similarly to um, what my colleague from Bremen said, we had quite a few um, sort of privately organized donations and they helped with the shipping. They also helped us with the procurement of further protective equipment by um, sort of finding us suppliers that were actually offering protective clothing with the proper CE certificates and so on. And um, they also helped us in directly um, communicating via social media in China. Our mayor recorded a message, a video message of solidarity. So we, they distributed that for us, um, which was a nice touch, I think. And um, then lastly, so this is sort of onward looking already. They offered to participate in, in trade fairs and conferences on, and so on in China on behalf of the partners if they are starting up again, as long as there are still entry restrictions in place uh, for China. So um, for, for Hamburg, this sort of has been invaluable um, so far and it wouldn't have been possible sort of without these long-standing connections um, even before, like long before the crisis. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, thank you, Anna. And um, maybe I'll start off, because that's very interesting um, to have this outward communication of, of sending the video of thanks over to a Chinese audience. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll follow up with that uh, question from, from Tineke in Ghent as to if, if there was a level of communication on Chinese cooperation within your city and, and, and um, if there was a similar, I mean, did you also have a video for the citizens of Hamburg or how do they understand Chinese relations? And it does have to be a push on communicating it to them. Sorry, you mean, um, was there a video from the, the citizens of, of Hamburg or? No, sorry. I mean, how does the city of Hamburg go about communicating relations with China with the, with the, with the citizens of Hamburg? Mm. I mean, is that something that's, that's you're, you're paying attention to at the moment? Have there been any tensions that you've had to address or, or it, it hasn't come up yet? Well, not to my knowledge. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, great. And so maybe I'll just ask you as well about, and of course everyone is welcome to ask questions in the chat as well, but uh, and, until, uh, if they don't, then I, let me just ask quickly about the future as well. So again, like, like Bremen, you're in a situation where relations are already strong, then you have this event that comes and, and strengthens them further. Um, does this, are there any indications about either in the short term or the long term, how this will affect your work together with China? Well, for the moment, it seems like the pandemic has, if anything, brought us closer together. So, of course, the, the hope is that this will sort of carry on into the future um, and to, to sort of strengthen the solidarity between the cities and will strengthen the cooperation. Okay, brilliant. And we have a question um, coming in here from citydiplomacy.org um, asking, uh, so, do you, is the Hamburg has an office in Shanghai? Is that? And 
just wondering how she says how, how does it work so i suppose um maybe we can speak specifically about the the, the current moment how how is that um office operated uh, within this diplomatic uh, context well it's not part of official diplomacy so it's not a consulate or anything like that it is um an office of, uh, as I said, all these partner institutions um, that finance um, our, our colleagues there. It's a team of currently around 10 people in charge of different sort of topic areas. We have somebody who's, for example, um, responsible for sort of the education side of things. We have a business representative. Um, we have somebody who's in charge of sort of social media and content creation. Um, and they all um, have their office space in the Hamburg House, which was uh, part of the World Expo in Shanghai. And um, yes, so I'm not entirely certain how, how far I should elaborate or what exactly. That's perfect. That's perfect. So indeed, that would be a center of um, maybe um, soft diplomacy and strong ties. I would say so, yes. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. So we come back uh, if people, um, we've got a thanks there. So that, that was, a uh, question is definitely answered. Um, <laughs> uh, we come back uh, to the experience of Hamburg uh, shortly, but let's move on now to, so thank you, uh, to um, Jani Mullis from, from Helsinki. Are you there, um, Jani? Yes, I'm here. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you. Great. So, just a few words about our background with our with our par partners in in China. So we have a we have long-standing relationships with the with the city of cities of Beijing and Shenzhen. Uh, Beijing has been a sister city of of uh, of Helsinki for from the early 2000s or so, and and actually, in fact, it's 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 the only sister official sister city that 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 Helsinki has. Uh, all all our other sister cities are. Or, or we consider capital cities of other countries as our as our sister cities, uh, and then Shenzhen has been a long time uh, partner partner for the city as well. Uh, our relationship with both cities is, is quite strong, uh, particularly with Beijing, uh, whose mayor visited uh, Helsinki as recently as last last October, as as one of the one of the last international engagements before the before the uh, crisis really hit. Uh, when the when the crisis started and was ongoing in in China, we we were uh, we offered our our uh, solid solidarity and and, uh, and and support for for our partners there. Which even though it was was not a, a material support of any kind, I, I believe it did go to some some extent in in then uh, maintaining a good good connection and then following up in, in once the once the virus uh, spread to to Helsinki. So, so I, I, I believe that, uh, as as previous speakers have mentioned as well, the fact that the a lot of the collaboration is based on on uh, personal relationships. That was a, that was a good opportunity from us to to help uh, foster and, and then develop those those relationships, um, and then also to kind of just uh, exchange exchange uh, information and comments as as the as our Chinese uh, colleagues were were all working uh, from home at a time when when we were still at our offices then. Uh, once, once the uh, virus hit uh, Helsinki in about mid mid March, there was a, there was as as with the other cities that have talked, there was a sort of a quick and immediate response from from our uh, Chinese partners to to offer support. Um, I have to say that at the beginning of the of the crisis, we were as a, as a city, we were so focused on on kind of getting the the crisis response in place that that many many opportunities I think were were not followed followed up on. Um, but but to the extent that we from the the international office were able to 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 do so, we were we were uh, pushing things forward. Uh, all of the all of the things that have been mentioned uh, by the previous uh, speakers were going on with with our partners as well. So there were offers of of donations of of PPE and offers of of, of providing ex expertise and and experiences from uh, from from the experience in in, in China earlier. And once. Uh, I think the ones that have uh, proved to be the most beneficial so far uh, for us has been the our our, Be our Beijing colleagues uh, provided 
support in, in vetting some of the, the PPE suppliers that the city was uh, planning on, on procuring uh, equipment from. Uh, so, so really to have a, have a partner on the ground who could confirm whether, whether a supplier was a proper company uh, or not was, was, was very helpful for our, for our procurement department. As, as this was something that would have been very difficult for us to do uh, on our own. Uh, we also received very extensive uh, health and safety protocols from, from Beijing on, on how they approached the, uh, keeping their, their healthcare specialists uh, isolated or, or safe from the, from the virus, which we have uh, shared as, as a benchmark with, the, with our, with our uh, uh, healthcare uh, experts. On, on uh, some of the considerations, and, and I'm looking forward from, uh, from the previous uh, questions and, and, and discussions, I, on the question of, of the sort of the uh, political or, or diplomatic nature of, of donations, uh, I saw that there was a, a very good dialogue or, or discussion uh, within the city organization. So, so uh, given that the, our, our security department uh, obviously sort of highlighted the, the concerns and would have preferred for no donations to be received. And then for our healthcare department, uh, the, the absolute number one priority was to just get any PPP, uh, PPE uh, uh, available, especially at the, at the time when, when there was a very big uh, gap in, 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 in their provision. I, I felt like uh, the international office was able to play a nice, nice sort of uh, mediating role between those two kind of extreme uh, views on, on, the, on the matter. Um, and we were able to to kind of come to a, a sort of a compromise that that made sense or was beneficial for all sides. Uh, we have received a, a a small donation from from the city of Shenzhen so far, as well as a few small ones from uh, from uh, private or or sort of uh, foundation based op operators. Uh, one ones that have have a, a presence in in Helsinki already. Um, on on. Uh, like I mentioned, I think uh, most of our sort of success in on on this uh, corona response, as long as well as with many of the other activities that we carry out with our partners in China, it's it's really based on the on the uh, sort of personal part partnership subship level. So so if you're if you're at the at the uh, point or level where you're able to to have a informal chat with your with your counterparts in in your partner cities, then that makes uh, that makes it so much easier to take things forward and to and to kind of assess ways of how how you can best uh, work together. And finally, just a question on the on on the communications with citizens, which is not such a such a big concern uh, here in Helsinki. But uh, given that one of the sort of the foundation uh, activities that we have with Beijing is the, is the celebration of the Chinese New Year, which has been going on in in Helsinki for for uh, for a very long time. Um, and, it, and, it, and that has been successfully uh, organized as a, as a purely cultural event with, with no, no sort of uh, political overtones. Um, there, is, there is kind of this uh, tradition uh, and expectation in the, in the citizen, citizenship that, that there is, it is possible to, to engage and, and interact with, with our uh, Chinese colleagues without there being sort of any, um, a, a, any sort of... Uh, devious part, part, parts to it. Um, and that's something that we, we want to uh, maintain very strongly. And, and, and of course, the, the local Chinese community in, in Finland has a, uh, and Helsinki has a big part to play in this as well. Uh, uh, the fact that there is a, there is a number of, of Chinese citizens that, that people uh, work with and interact with has a, has a, has a big, big part to pay, play in, in alleviating those kinds of concerns. Thank you on, from my behalf. Brilliant, and thank you very much. And people are welcome to go ahead and fire in some questions. And um, maybe I'll just start um, because I think you mentioned um, quite an interesting experience, not only with with uh, as as you said, uh, sharing material, but as you also pointed out, um, sharing expertise and thoughts um, on the future as well. Um, you mentioned to me. Um, consultation with uh, epidemiologists and virologists um, and local experts on healthcare, virus control, etc. Maybe you take just a, a minute or two to elaborate a bit on that. Yeah, so, so uh, we've, we've passed on the offer to, to have uh, sort of consultations with, with epidemiologists and, 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 and uh, healthcare experts uh, that were involved with the response in Beijing to our, to our uh, experts. Uh, but that was sort of really uh, part of that sort of the, the hectic 
time of, of, of responding to the crisis when that wasn't uh, really feasible to organize. Uh, so, so that actually was converted to this uh, sharing of documentation, which is less less sort of time constraint and 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 and, and is, uh, is e more easy to integrate into into the city's own own uh, activities. So, so that was actually that was uh, and 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 really that the amount of documentation that we received from Beijing was was uh, immense. So it was it was I, it was. Uh, I was I, I have to say I was impressed by the by the amount of documentation that they were happy to share with us and, and provide. Uh, so obviously not all of it is going to be 100% relevant for for the activities here in Helsinki, but but in terms of assessing and and, and I think everyone is still sort of uh, assessing what the what the uh, what the level of protection is that you need for different activities and and so so getting getting uh, some feedback and benchmarks on that from other places. We've had some healthcare experts uh, and providers get get uh, get the virus, even though we've assumed that that they've been fully covered. Uh, so we're still kind of assessing where, where why that might have been the case, and and, and learning from others is uh, uh, has has a big part to play in that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's uh, we all still so know so little, relatively speaking, that uh, information is is I'm sure is 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 un undoubtedly as important as. Um, gear etc to receive um okay brilliant and i see um a question in here um about uh perception of so you said you've had a long-running a sort of cultural relationship with china just in terms of uh, celebrating the the new years etc um there's a question um here as to whether you see an image shift of china in your city both at municipal or or, or civil level uh, after, after or during COVID nineteen, and and if so, how you're dealing with that? Um, I haven't really thought about it, so I'm not sure if I'm able to say something outright that 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 is very uh, insightful. But maybe my my first reaction maybe is that uh, uh, I think I think one possible outcome. I I, I wouldn't know for sure if it, if that's the case already, but one possible outcome is that it, there's a um, how would I say maybe like a normalization of the of the of of the thinking of what what the, what the Chinese city uh, is and means. I think there's a little bit of still of kind of like this you know Orientalism and 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 idea of of like something exotic. Uh, and then when in fact they're you know when people see that they're the same kind of same looking cities as we have and they're dealing with and and we and they are dealing with the same kind of crisis as we are in in, in similar ways. Uh, I think that kind of can could potentially bring that uh, I thought home that that hey actually you know it's not that different and then there are actually you know dealing with the same kind of things as we are here so so maybe there would be more possibilities for for uh, collaboration and, and and understanding between between our uh, cities. Right, and and I hope that is the um, message that citizens around Europe end up taking from this because uh, you know it, it's. The, the, you know, a common struggle will hopefully lead to to an increase in this perception rather than rather than uh, any other possible outcomes. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, Jenny. Well, and again, uh, we'll come back to you shortly in the in the um, open conversation. But let's um, now move quickly forward to uh, Vienna, and I think that uh, Veronica uh, Sitala, are you there? I'm here. Brilliant. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, thank you very much for having me. It's my first time. <laughs> and so I'm really glad to meet you all. And I'm working with uh, European and international relations here within the uh, Vienna's chief executive office. Um, to start out with the uh, quantity, nevertheless, I have talked to the uh, our city's crisis team and um, they have um, had donations in the scope of uh, 250,000 so far, which is pretty much just donations. And these are predominantly PF2 masks. There have been uh, six major donations from China as to the present, stemming mainly from Shanghai, Nanjing, and very soon there also will um, arrive one from Chengdu, which actually is our partnering, our, if you will, our twin city. Of course, we are also in close contact with uh, Beijing uh, through communication of our mayor. Um, yet, um, those donations have come from Shanghai, Nanjing, and soon from Chengdu. Um, the, the gentleman was in the city's crisis team I've talked to. He, just to give you a, a rough idea about the structure, 
He's um, part of the Vienna Ambulance Service and he together with other entities of the city such as the Department of Public Health Services and uh, very importantly the Vienna Hospital Association. They communicate with our ministry for the interior on a, on a I think it's a, a daily basis even. And interestingly enough, the cost for uh, the transport of the donations, which is borne by the city, uh, seems to be pretty high in comparison to the value of goods. And if you look at it uh, at this, um, in this way, I think it might uh, become even more an act of solidarity also, just uh, maybe to also to look at it from that angle. Um, uh, of course, uh, donations uh, in, in Vienna, they just add uh, to what is generally needed. Um, and uh, Vienna, like many other cities, they buy the masks uh, from the international market. And um, as has been mentioned with other cities, there's um, a charter flight which is going out from uh, Shanghai, I think now uh, every second week. And um, in, in, in some cases, if uh, the cubit allows that, uh, donations can come still with that. Um, what I also observed, or what we also observed, is um, that uh, there's those, what also has been discussed so far. That is also a former, a very formal level on how to go to about, go about the donations, and a rather informal one. Uh, for example, we. I think sometimes it just stems from the idea of a very um, engaged individual who then comes across the idea to, to give masks uh, to Vienna. And for example, we have been uh, given masks by a city of Pengzhou. Uh, Pengzhou is about 35, some 35 kilometers from uh, Vienna. And uh, from what I remember, they have been to Vienna, I think um, maybe, uh, in, in, in fall, I believe, or in, in spring, I, I don't remember clearly, but they have visited us and paid uh, a visit to us and we have received them. And so this city also uh, gave a, also a very small donation, but we received a donation from them. So there's also this rather informal um, uh, way of going about it, but of course this is still um, also a way of so uh, saying, um, of, of just uh, expressing solidarity, which I think is the key word to everything in that uh, uh, whole process. And um, um, I also would like to mention before I go a little bit more into Chengdu and uh, how the dynamics uh, developed with Chengdu, I wanted to say that also the Chinese community here in Vienna um, gave a donation uh, uh, to the city. And uh, this, of course, uh, was highly appreciated. And uh, we, um, there was, um, they did that just, um, the handover was done in the, in the city courtyard, in the courtyard of, of our city hall, with our mayor being present, and also, uh, of course, the ambassador of, uh, uh, of China. And uh, it was also f uh, followed by a press release to the uh, Austrian press agency. So we also carry that uh, forward to, to our local press. Um, um, uh, very recently, the city of Nanjing also donated a total of 50,000 masks. And what is interesting about Nanjing is that uh, this has been done from a district level. We have, um, uh, the, that's the district of Hulao in, 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 in Nanjing, and uh, the donation was given to our third district. And, uh, the medical units there. And uh, so I think this is also one aspect of it because if you have these partnerships, sometimes if the, the districts, they tend to visit it at each other and then of course there's also this more personal, informal uh, way of friendship which, is, which uh, is developing and I think a lot of things can spring from that also. Um, Yes, let's see what I still have to report to you. Um, maybe, yeah, the city of Chengdu. Um, oh, yes, of course, we see uh, a strengthening of ties uh, to the city of uh, Chengdu simply because of the identif identified dialogue which is going on. And uh, this dialogue um, just developed very positively, of course. And, and um, 
Um, also, the, uh, that uh, donation, which is uh, soon going to arrive, is not the most extensive one uh, we have received, but I, I think this is not uh, that much of uh, an importance. It's more important to see that uh, uh, this is a heartfelt act of solidarity. Um, Interestingly enough, in terms of the dynamics, it was uh, Chengdu when uh, the, uh, China was first hit and then it spread also to, to Chengdu. Um, the pandemic spread there. They were asking us for help and I found that also pretty remarkable. Um, I think it's uh, basically due to the fact that uh, within the last years, uh, since we have signed a memorandum with uh, Chengdu, this was in 2016, of a very general kind, a memorandum of a very general kind, um, they have been extremely active in communicating uh, to us and also uh, suggesting uh, various uh, kinds of interactions like music festivals, uh, all kinds of uh, different things where they also wanted us to come to China. And uh, so our communication uh, really developed towards uh, friendship-like uh, situations. And um, when now uh, Chengdu was asking us for help, uh, of course our mayor then uh, wrote back a letter um, we didn't have a video message though, but uh, <laughs> we wrote back a letter, he wrote back a letter and uh, was expressing his heart for solidarity, um, that, which solidarity I think is uh, the key word in the narrative mm -hmm. of the whole uh, <laughs> thing probably. And um, our mayor was also looking forward uh, in that letter for a music festival on screen, Vienna Music Festival on screen, which is going to take place in most probably, I don't know if it will be possible in October in uh, Chengdu. And um, uh, just to let you know that uh, we were asked for help, but uh, in that situation, we were not able to help because as has been mentioned by other cities as well, we haven't had any, any kind of that medical equipment because we simply didn't produce it. So mm -hmm. it wasn't there, um, nevertheless. Uh, so I just wanted to say that before the crisis in all these years, of course, uh, there was a lot of dialogue also uh, in, within our city to which extent such a partnership offers a win-win situation for both sides. And for example, we did not see a lot, something like a big investment or so. Um, our tourist board has vivid and strong activities during China. And in normal times, Chengdu was also targeted in recent years. Um, also because of being a hub in the uh, western part of China for outgoing tourists uh, to Europe. But these activities might have been uh, only reinforced by our partnership and might have been happened anyway. So uh, this might now sound as if we didn't uh, see any benefit in that relationship, but this is not true at all. We see a huge benefit in it because um, also for both sides, because the partnership uh, has been a great learning, learning experience for us also in grasping a little bit more how a city in China is not only functioning on a daily basis, but how it is tied into uh, China's state policy and how it is developing at a very, very fast pace. And we've also learned a lot uh, concerning uh, communication. So when I mean uh, communication, I mean us office, as officers, um, um, we profited a lot uh, from that, how, how, how to, to go about communication with our Chinese friends and colleagues uh, in Chengdu. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, for example, there have been four officers since 2017, uh, I think, uh, who have been on a 10-day long sister city program in Chengdu. And um, in turn, we had experts over in various fields regarding our best practices. For example, we share that big topic of uh, green city, uh, a topic uh, which is very prominent uh, in Chengdu as well mm -hmm. and of course our smart city and city development areas topic and primary education where uh, Chengdu wanted to build uh, 
kind of a Vienna campus in Chengdu. And we didn't know back then how to go about this, how our system feeds into theirs and vice versa. Um, but just shortly before the crisis um, um, came, came about in the whole world, uh, we tried, we wanted to initiate a process which helps us to identify key areas where the city of Vienna actually can learn from Chengdu's experience uh, and create a more win-win situation for both sides. And, and I've seen um, a very interesting uh, talk in, during the EuroCities annual um, uh, conference. There was, a, I mean, the, the depth of the engagement between China and Vienna is really interesting. And, and I saw that the, the speaker at that time was saying how it's a more difficulty to figure out where not to cooperate than where to uh, cooperate at the moment. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's also really um, interesting what you're saying about the, the idea that, you know, it's not always obvious to cities cooperating with China exactly what the outcome is or if there is an outcome or, you know, is the relationship surface or is it deep, etc. So, so it's really interesting. It's really good to see that uh, all of the work that Vienna has put into this uh, over the years and, and, and um, has, has, has sort of showed itself as something that's um, substantial, I think even before this in, in Vienna's case, but I, for, for many cities, I think this will also be a, a proving point. As an example, Chengdu is an example now, of course, we also entertain a very good standing with Beijing in Shanghai. There's lots of initiatives going on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so I think we're just going to hear for one uh, more speaker, and that's um, Faith Blakemore from the Enrich Project, which is a sister project of the Transurban EU China. So uh, thank you very much, Veronica, and we'll come back to you with some questions in a minute. And anyone who has a question to uh, ask Veronica can please just um, communicate that through the chat. Thank you, Veronica. Um, Faith, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm, I'm here. I'm just wondering if you've got my presentation ready. It'd just be good to have that online if you could. Absolutely. So let me just share my screen. Um, and you should be able to share screen. Uh, in which, okay. So can you uh, see? Okay. Is your, can you see your? Oh, yeah. I can. Uh, yes, I can see it now. Could you make it full screen? Is there a chance to make it full, is it screen? full screen? It should be full screen now. It, it's not. It, uh, it, 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 that that will do. It, it, it's um, oh, it's still showing the slides at the side, but that's uh, okay. Um, it's full screen, but unfortunately it's not. But anyway, please. Uh, okay. Uh, that's okay. And I'll just tell you when to click through. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Faith Blakemore. I'm one of the um, sort of project managers working on Enrich in China. I, I work for a company called Steinbeis Fai GmbH, which is a, a German company, um, and we're one of the project partners in this EU project. Um, so we've been working for coming up to four years now to uh, better the relationship between China and Europe, uh, specifically focusing on science, technology, and innovation cooperation. Um, and that's in order to support European to be a leader in, in science, technology, and innovation when it comes to, to China and our relationships there. So we help um, researchers, uh, research institutes, as well as um, businesses, SMEs, etc., uh, to connect into China as much as possible. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so in terms of how we work, we've got a pipeline of services to help support people get to China. So we see that the first end is about enhancing uh, knowledge. So we offer uh, things like webinars, um, lots of uh, brochures and support, etc. Um, so if you go on the website, there's different um, articles, uh, brochures, different publications that can help with that kind of knowledge. Um, and during this uh, pandemic, we've actually been helping with a lot of webinars. And when I say a lot, I think there's been one a week uh, that we've been doing, which has been uh, helping people connect in, but also providing a lot of information, um, asking a lot of some of the tough questions that are coming out as well, um, and looking at things in a sector focused way. So we do have uh, various ways that we've been uh, supporting with that. We then, through the pipeline, also offer equip, uh, equipping yourself, so giving you the right tools to be able to, uh, to do what you need to do as a 
as a research institute or a business uh, in terms of getting there. And again, um, we've been offering through the, this COVID time a uh, investment call. Um, so we are connected to um, a, a large pool of investors. These are global investors uh, from across a range of investment types, from corporate investors, uh, high net worth individuals, pension schemes, etc. And some of these are actually really interested in some of the innovations that are being developed at the moment as a response to uh, the COVID situation. Um, so we've put a call out and said, if anybody's got any innovations and they'd like to, to try going through uh, this process, then we will certainly uh, do some reviewing and, and try and put them in touch with, with the, the investors that we've got. So that, again, information about that is available uh, on our website. Uh, the next stage is then about establishing your strategy. So this is more sort of helping people get the right strategy to get them where they need to be. What do they need to do? What are the next steps? Um, and engaging their network. We used to do <laughs> missions, but obviously at the moment in Corona times, that's quite difficult to do. Um, so what we have been doing is trying to do webinars where we actually put people together. So matchmaking webinars, but also people pitching uh, to, to people between EU and China. Um, and the, the final thing that we do on this is uh, what we call expand your reach. Uh, this is about soft landing in China. So this is where we have the relationships between the EU and, and China, but specifically having places on the ground in China that can support those uh, EU companies. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so what we've got at the moment, uh, we have five different uh, soft landing zones, as we call them. Uh, each of those are connected to us um, as what we'd say as a partnership. So they have gone through an accreditation process. Um, we know uh, who they are. We know um, what services they offer. We know that they're trustworthy. Um, and therefore, we're working with them to help any clients that come to us from the European side saying, look, we need to connect into China. We either need services or we actually want to go there. We want to land there. Or especially at these times in these corona times, if they have any questions or they need to build connections with those people on the ground, these are our contact points. These are our people on the ground. These could also be useful to you guys if you need any uh, support on the ground in China. I know you have your city to city relationships. Uh, these guys are across a range of different solutions. So some of these are actually innovation centers. Some of them are incubators. Uh, some of them are just service centers. So there's a whole range of things that they can offer. Um, but some of them, as you can see, are actually already connected to EU. They're already part of an EU relationship. So Finchi, for example, um, is, is Finland. It's a Finland um, company uh, set up. Um, and working with the, the, the Finnish side to help push people over to China. But Horston International is actually a Belgian company uh, that have set up and uh, are co-creating uh, a center in uh, the Xi'an province. Uh, and then we also have the Mesa Nanjing, which is actually Stuttgart, uh, the Stuttgart Mesa, which has uh, created a connection into uh, Nanjing. So there's some really good uh, connection points there. You can see there's different focuses from 3D printing, AI, big data, aerospace, through to the creative industries, green and bioeconomy. Uh, so there's various different focuses, which means that we can uh, support any company or any organization that comes to us saying, eh, yeah, we need, to, we need to do this sector in this sort of way. We can help put them in touch with the right kind of soft landing zone that can talk about their region, what kind of support is on offer, um, but also what kind of funding and practical, you know, who, what kind of contacts do they need, what kind of uh, tax initiatives are there, et cetera, et cetera. So again, these might be interesting for any of your businesses that are, are looking to soft land in China, or at this point in time with the, the pandemic happening, just looking for further information. So their websites are there, but again, you can go on the Enrich in China website, and uh, there's a lot of publications from them and also uh, a specific page for each uh, so you can get further information from them. Next slide please. Uh, so this is just our, our information. You can see there the different partners that are involved. So we have some Chinese partners, including MOST, which is the Ministry of Science and Technology in China. They are one of our project partners. Uh, SysTech, again, uh, the Tsinghua University. So we have some really important uh, Chinese partners that are involved in this, in this project. Those are our contact details at the moment. We are actually setting up uh, an office in, in, in Beijing at the moment. So I think that address might slightly change, but however, uh, the web address and our email address is always going to be the same. And you can follow us on the various uh, channels that are listed there. Uh, so I think that kind of covers everything. But uh, if you've got any questions, I'm, I'm willing to answer them. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Faith. And 
um, to everyone as well. Yeah, there's really exciting work going on within Rich China. Um, so I do encourage you to check out that site. And if you, whether you have relations or not, I think it's a way to 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 strengthen or or establish them. Um, if anyone has a question for uh, Faith, please feel free to um, stick this uh, into the. Um, what, the slides, indeed. I'll share um, uh, fifth slides when I when yes, I, um, no problem. Um, I'm happy for them to be shared. Fantastic. Um, a, a quick question here, okay, from Stefan. Uh, Faith, in, in terms of looking at city city cooperation on a, on a more general level, um, do you see uh, medium or long term impacts as a result of uh, the COVID nineteen crisis? And 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 for you, at, at an initial glance, at least, uh, what do you think these impacts look like? Um, I have actually noticed some um, some differences. So for the past four years, we've been working to to um, to build those connections with EU companies that are looking to go to China. We have noticed that drop off a bit. So the, the level of interest is, is, is kind of dropping off. And it's not that people aren't interested, they're just taking a step back. So mm. whereas before they may have been going on missions, they may have been trying to soft land. Now it's almost like they're going back to the first part of the process. They're getting their knowledge together again. It's almost like they're going back to a, um, we need a bit more information before we know what we're what we're doing with this. Um, I have also seen, as some people have been saying in the group chat, I've been noticing some rather vehement opposition to to people going to China or even discussing China. There does seem to be a rhetoric that's going on about um, you know China is the, the the source of this this pandemic. So and it, and it, it feels really important that we try and challenge that a little bit in, in terms of saying, well, okay, yes, they may have it may have come from China, but that doesn't mean that um, that we need to see China as a big problem. It could have come from anywhere. It just happened to be that it came from there because of the conditions in that particular place at that particular time. Um, and yes, we do need to address some of the some of the maybe uh, business things, but I think China, from what I'm seeing, China are already doing that. They're already making changes to some of the um, the legislation around wildlife markets, for example, and how they deal with health issues. Uh, this could really help support China move in the right direction in, in some ways. But I think right now, at the moment, it just means that people are just, it feels like they're just taking a bit of a step back and are a bit more unsure. Um, so we are trying to respond to that by offering a lot more knowledge based uh, webinars. And again, these reports online from our different soft landing zones provide information about the local region and help people acclimatize before they make any decisions. Um, and I would say maybe for city to city relationships, keeping that that communication going, don't drop off, don't stop the communication keep the conversation going because um, it's going to be important to have those kind of relationships and that that conversation to know where to go in the future and which direction to take um, but yeah i think there is going to be an impact but um, not sure wholly exactly the direction it will go in just yet yeah brilliant definitely uh, multifaceted that's a great um point. i mean this is one of the interests for us in holding uh, this webinar and in city to city international cooperation in general i think is that while um national and supranational narratives uh you know can be tense and 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 unconstructive at times i think that the city to city channels are a way that we've consistently seen um uh, a more open-minded and, and and practical approach so thanks for highlighting that as well um so questions for a question for vienna i see uh from katarina so feel free to share that katarina and anyone who has a question for any of the speakers uh that spoke today please do feel free to launch it now maybe while i wait i'll just quickly um if people aren't following in the chat there's some interesting things that people have put in for example leeds is speaking about how they uh, received a donation of um, masks from hangzhou which arrived via dhl with no problem although there was a uh, significant import tax that had to be paid on them and we've also here heard from court which received uh, donations of um, personal protective equipment including ventilators from Shanghai sister city and uh, Hangzhou and uh, Wuxi I'm sorry for my pronunciation of Chinese city names um, again with no issues so some some cities are managing to slip these through it might be interesting for those that are having difficulty or those that are thinking about doing in the future to communicate with Cork and Leeds about the approach that they've taken. Um, so 
Katrina just wants to ask um, Vienna um, about the hospital, the Vienna Hospital uh, Association. Um, so uh, I'm not sure. So um, Veronica, if you're still there, can you give us a little bit more information about um, the communication between or, or the relationship between the sort of um, um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not an expert on that. I'm not uh, involved in the in, in the logistics there, and also not on the crisis team. Just from what I know is that uh, there's a team which is uh, within the crisis team, and uh, they uh, would see what the need of the um, uh, of the actual need of um, hospitals, and also, for example, house for the elderly and uh, institutions who pertain to health, uh, to health uh, what they actually need. And um, then um, that, that's something which is, I think, uh, discussed within that, um, in that crisis uh, unit. And then oh, what, what's the question? What's the actual question? So she's... That, uh, basically, the, 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 the umbrella organization of all these um, health institutions, which are from the data city of Vienna. And Katarina, is that clear for you, or is there something else that you were? Uh, I was just uh, uh, wanted to ask more about the Vienna Hospital Association and the expertise from the Chinese uh, medical team. But that's okay. You're not expert, so. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> if you if you want me to, if you. Just write to me and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know in a yeah. more detailed Thank way you. through our experts, okay? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Back. I also didn't say uh, that we had also a great cooperation with the, before the crisis came to Europe, we were sending, the city of Belgrade was sending the uh, messages of solidarity to Beijing, Shanghai and uh, Shenzhen, which we are uh, sister cities and they were, they really appreciated that. So I believe that we should continue the cooperation and communication with uh, uh, Chinese cities after the crisis, of course. <laughs> Good, absolutely. And it was mentioned, I think, that uh, solidarity comes in many forms, not just in, in terms of equipment. I see Lorenzo is unmuted. Did you have a question you want to ask Lorenzo? No. Okay. All right. Um, any further questions for the speakers? You're totally... Yeah. Yeah, there is a question from Frankfurt. Yes. Yeah, it's Frankfurt. Um, question to all, to all cities. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, in February, uh, it happened that uh, over here, the Asian-looking people, if Chinese or even if Japanese or Korean, happened to be offended uh, from the, uh, in the public uh, spaces uh, and being considered as bringing the virus along to, over to here. And then we, weeks later, we have got uh, reports from China that uh, after uh, the, the pandemic was a little bit under control in China and there was a fear for a re-import of the virus to China, then it was the foreign-looking people in China have, uh, having um, um, experienced uh, similar uh, problems, uh, being excluded from some places and so on. And uh, how, uh, a question to all, are there any experiences in, uh, in your cities um, or, maybe, uh, or maybe initiatives uh, uh, to, to, um, to combat this? Uh, we had, just for example, we had in February our Confusion Institute in Frankfurt, they made an initiative uh, to, to do some, um, pub, uh, to, to influence the public opinion that not every Chinese uh, or Asian people on the street is a virus. Uh, and uh, how is how how are your experiences in that? Okay, good, excellent um, question, and something that I've heard. Uh, for, yeah, of happening in a lot of cities, difficulty for Asian um, Asian people basically walking the street of whatever nationality. So it would be really interesting to hear if there are other cities that are um, experiencing. Or, or taking some action to tackle that. I know I already mentioned Belfast too, the mayor released this video, uh, basically trying to emphasize collaboration with China and say, you know, there's, there's no reason to characterize people that way. Um, does anyone else, uh, a city want to um, speak to that? Uh, um, 
Serbia, so in Belgrade, they haven't had that issue coming up. Um, maybe, um, has there been an approach, um, for example, maybe I'll ask if Shelley, are you still there? Is there an approach um, in Bristol towards um, in ensuring that uh, that, that uh, the the people of Asian ethnicity or specifically the Chinese uh, community are treated in a respectful way and, and not made scapegoats for the scenario? So there has been a little bit of, um, so some of our, I've been speaking to some of our politicians about that. Um, and I, in the pot, yeah. So I think what we're trying at the moment this week, I think we're just thinking about some of the positive news stories that we can communicate to some of those groups who are being um, slightly hostile, but um, it's not a kind of, I think there are sort of reported cases, but it, but it's not, that that's the case across the whole city so it's not visibly a problem for the whole city but there are a few issues with certain groups within the community um so we've been talking to politicians about that and just the need to have really positive stories about all the good things that we do um with china okay brilliant so keeping it uh where it does occur keeping it sort of j just battling it in, in the media yeah um, or not even in the media but through um channels that the politicians have with those respective communities who are you know who are perhaps raising concerns about relationships with China because I think in general for the city people are positive about the relationship we have with China but there are some groups who um, for various different reasons you know and now this being one of them, but, you know, political motives and so on, who wouldn't necessarily support that. But, you know, that's not just the case of China. That could be for any collaboration that we have with any city across the world. So. OK, brilliant. So yeah, I think, yeah, focus, basically just focus on those sort of positive stories um, and work that we can do across a number of areas around education, culture, business, um, values and behaviours, that kind of thing. Yeah, good. So even more effective, probably this di direct communication with uh, groups and, and sort of a, a hearing of their concerns, but a, but a sh showing the evidence uh, yeah. that 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 uh, this is for the benefit of the city. I know. Um, I remember last year that Brussels was sharing. Uh, we had a huge celebration about uh, being. Was it the most or the second most diverse city in in Europe? I can't remember which, but um, maybe Brussels. Um, can tell us if you've had any experience with um, issues around um, Asian communities or Asian ethnicity and if there's been any uh, move to tackle that. Well, I don't know about any uh, big problems uh, arising from that. As you say, Brussels is a fairly multicultural city with about 180 nationalities. So, uh, is, uh, the Chinese communities are, are well uh, integrated. Of course, there can be some minor problems in, in some um, more popular neighborhoods, maybe. As a, uh, I can tell you that my wife, she's a Vietnamese. She was once shouted at, uh, as, as they, they thought she was a Chinese, oh, Corona, Chinese. Uh, so these things can happen, but, uh, it's not really a concern and yeah, maybe also these kind of things uh, tend to happen a lot on the social media, you know, uh, Twitter, Instagram and so on. But uh, yeah, that's people who are uh, most of the time racist already and then uh, who, who find uh, a way to, to use their, their feelings uh, about foreigners. Um, but I don't know of any official uh, response to that. Uh, it hasn't been really into, into the press or something. So occasionally it can happen, but there's not a, a general approach uh, to, to tackle it uh, from the political side, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. So something that um, maybe 
something that that uh, is to a degree unfortunately inevitably inevitable in cities and and that we tackle in a, in, a, in a broader way over time um okay good any further questions that anyone wants to input they're welcome to ask on mic or in the chat on the right there um nothing coming in at the minute so let me just ask one more question people are still welcome to contribute but uh if nothing further comes, then uh, we will leave it just with, um, I like to go back to um, uh, to um, for recovery. Yes, indeed, that's related to what I want to ask uh, Shelley. So maybe I can return to Bremen if you are still online. Um, maybe a final, a uh, question for you and indeed to any city that uh, is welcome to chime in on this. But because we were speaking specifically about business relations, um, maybe it would be interesting to hear uh, what, what the impact of this moving forward would be on those relations that you found to be a source of strength during the crisis. Um, that's a question from Matthias, are you? Ah, Matthias is no longer with us. Um, uh, Edward, uh, in Frankfurt, you also spoke of the importance of the business relation. Um, do you have anything to say on, on how that specific relation looks going forward? Yes, it's, uh, it's of great importance uh, for Frankfurt and for the metropolitan region, of course. And uh, we have, uh, I forgot to mention, also a liaison office in Shanghai. This is only one person sent to Shanghai, but then uh, with uh, two person staff in Shanghai, uh, who is uh, serving for uh, the, uh, in, uh, so those companies interested in, in looking for doing business in Europe or in Germany. And uh, uh, we want to, of course, convince them that uh, our place is a good place for them to open up their business. Besides that, we have uh, uh, one of the world's, world's largest uh, trade fair company here in Frankfurt, Messe Frankfurt. And they have uh, for more than 25 years a uh, branch office in Hong Kong and operating all Asia from there. They're doing big shows. Now they have also offices in Shanghai and in Guangzhou and doing big trade fair shows in, in China. For example, uh, the Auto Mechanica, it's, uh, it's uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, car suppliers uh, industry and so on. And this is, uh, this is a, a very strong uh, impact, but actually what they had to do all, they had to, to cancel their shows now in Asia. They, they, uh, now they are on hold, for example, the trade fair company and uh, is ready to restart maybe in, in fall, uh, which of course causes a lot of, of, uh, of economical uh, damage. Yes, un undoubtedly, and it's something that we have to, uh, I mean, there are interesting uh, solutions coming up. Maybe we'll see uh, uh, virtual test driving going on or something, but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, certainly it's something uh, I, that um, I think all these cities are focusing on. Um, maybe I'll ask, so just someone's, yes, did you have? No, uh, uh, Shelley just wanted to em emphasize further uh, experiences going forward on recovery work with China. Um, it's 12.30 now, so we're going to um, uh, sign off shortly and also, uh, I think, uh, leave those cities that want to discuss the Gengzhou Award to do so for a few minutes. That was a, a request that we had coming in. Um, and just to remind everyone that's here, we are uploading a recording of the entire webinar online. And as I said at the beginning, if there's anything that you would like, any input from you that you'd like to be removed from that recording, please do let me know by email um, as soon as you can. Um, does any city have a final input that they want to share on moving forward, relations moving forward for a recovery from the scenario? No, it's not uh, picking up, but um, this is a dialogue that we hope that we'll continue. Um, remember that uh, th through Eurocities, we're always working on this um, 
international cooperation and in the trans urban EU China project as well going forward. Uh, so this will remain a platform for for us to discuss it. And if you uh, want to speak directly with any of these cities or if you'd like to see another event uh, along these lines organized again at a later date, please don't hesitate to let us know. Um, yes, indeed, as uh, Tinika points out from, from uh, Ghent, um, I, uh, we're going to sign off now from the main webinar, but Ghent uh, has already requested to speak a little bit about the Gangzu International Award. So if there are cities that have experience with that, um, or are interested in it and would like to remain in conversation with Ghent, um, then, then please do. And I'll also ask uh, uh, Bernhard to go ahead and finish the recording.